right, in, in this video, we're going to take a look at the sound blocks, the sound category here to the left, you can see. Um, we've covered in previous videos the motion blocks and the looks blocks. And so today we're going to focus on sound. And there are not as many sound blocks as, uh, as in pre previous videos. So um, one thing I will do, though, however, is uh, get into recording sound. And so some of this uh, video will, will cover that as well. So the first thing I want to do very simply is to just pull out a sound block. And this is a play sound until done, meaning play the entire sound. And if I uh, click on it, you will see what happens. All right. And we can do something uh, using, as you saw in previous videos, I brought in other blocks aside from what was in our category. In this case, I'm going to bring in an event block called when this sprite clicked. So right now we're on this cat sprite, sprite number one. So when this sprite is clicked, play this sound. All right, let's test that out. All right, I'm gonna click them again. So you get the idea. Um, a sound can be triggered by any number of things. It could be, uh, you know, when you reach a certain goal. It could be when one sprite contacts another sprite. It could be when a uh, sprite hits a certain area of the of the stage. Just really depends on how you want to um, formulate your sounds. So I did want to mention that there is one other block that uh, looks similar. Uh, it's called start sound. So the one we were just looking at, play sound until done, and this one that says start sound, even though they might have the same sound file in them, they behave a little differently. So by just because of the way it sounds, the play sound until done, this should indicate to you that what will happen with your script, your set of codes, your blocks here that you put together, your next block, whatever it is below this one, won't start until this sound is done. Sometimes that's effective. Other times you want a sound to play while something else is going on. And that's where the sound the start sound block comes in handy. So what this one does is it will start the sound, but you'll continue to move on in the code blocks uh, that are below it. So for example, um, let's just say that I wanted to go back to what we did before with looks, and I wanted to change the size of the cat by, let's say, 50%. And instead of play sound, I'm going to say start sound. And now I'm going to hit play. And what will happen is, even though the meow sound was playing, the size changed while the meow was going on. OK. Let's switch that with play sound and see what happens. And I'm going to put the, I'm going to set the size back to this. And we'll hit play. Do you notice, you see the delay? So what is happening is the sound would play and everything else is suspended. And then the sprite got changed by 50% in size. So again, the difference being when you use the start sound, the script keeps going, the codes and the blocks below it keep going. Whereas play sound until done means I'm going to play it all the way through and then I will continue on. All right, well, in addition to creating sounds that you, or I should say, in addition to grabbing sounds that you find in the library, and by the way, if I go up here to sounds, the sounds tab, just like backgrounds and just like sprites, I can go find a sound that has already been recorded Look at all of these. And just by hovering over them, I can test them. And there are categories of those sounds. So if I want uh, loops, Okay, and all these different categories and pre-built sounds, which is really great. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I think if you took the time to search, you might find something um, appropriate for your project without having to record. However, if you also wanted to record, you can do that right here. 
Um, and so I'm going to do a little demonstration of that. So right now we currently have the meow sound built into this scratch project. If I want to create a new sound, um, I can just start to record one. And so I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say record. It might ask you for permission to use the microphone the very first time. Uh, once you've done that, it should remember that you've already given it permission to use the microphone. But let's test it right here. Okay, testing one, two, three. This is a sound. All right, I can play it. Okay, testing one, two, three. This is a sound. And I can save it. And then that sound just becomes recording number one. Now I can change the name of that. I can change it to say something like maybe uh, testing sounds. And I think that's important to know this whole idea of naming stuff to make sense for you. Remember that sprites themselves can be renamed. Um, backgrounds and backdrops can be renamed. Everything you can personalize, obviously your project you can rename. Um, to give it more meaning for you and for more relevance and to make it easier for you to reference later when, you, um, when you're when you looking for it. Okay, so once you have that sound recorded, you can play it. Okay, testing one, two, three. And then there's a few things that you can do to it. You can take, for example, parts of it and get rid of them. So if I just kind of clicked in here, I can take that section there that I know is uh, leading up to my sound, but it doesn't look relevant. It's very low in terms of volume, so I know that I'm not really speaking there yet. And I can delete that. And then I can try again. Okay, testing one, two, three. This is a sound. And then you can uh, do different effects for it. You can slow it down. Okay, testing one, two, three. This is a sound. All right, you can speed it up. Okay, test. Okay, testing one, two, three. This is a sound. Okay, you can play with these. So, for example, making it louder or softer, fading it in and out. So, a fade. Um, okay, testing one, two, three. This is a sound. You get the idea. Fading in allows you to um, make it gradually louder or softer. Okay. Two, three. This is a sound. And you can do that multiple times. I'm going to go ahead and undo okay, that. Testing one. Okay, testing one, two, three. This is a sound. You can reverse the sound. Um, this probably doesn't make as much sense when you're speaking, but if you had a sound effect that you were uh, recording, that making it reverse might give it a different type of effect. And then Robot gives it a robot voice. Okay, testing one, two, three. This is a sound. All right. So now when I go back to my code, You'll notice that I have play sound meow, which was the default. But if I go in there, now I have this new one that I recorded called testing sounds. So if I click on that and we hit play. Okay, testing one, two, three, this is a sound. So you can add any different types of sound effects that you want to your project. Okay, so uh, for the next few blocks, uh, you'll take a look at this one, which is just stop all sounds. And that's kind of self-explanatory, but when that's executed in a line of code, it shuts all sounds down. Okay, uh, the next one is change pitch. So for this one, I want to show you, we're going to bring in another uh, block called a, a repeat block here under controls, um, because I think it best illustrates what's going on with this change pitch. So, for example, I can take a repeat block and we'll stick the meow in there and then a change pitch by 10. And what this is going to do, well, I'll just play it so that you can hear it. Okay, so it repeated 10 times and each time it did it, it changed the pitch by 10%. Uh, if I go back to sounds, there is another block here called clear sound effects. And what that does, I'm going to go ahead and do it now. You didn't hear anything, but what it did was it changed that high-pitched meow back to the standard meow. So uh, earlier we mentioned about the difference between play sound and 
uh, start sound. And so what I want to do, I'm going to show you an example of a demonstration between the two of these. And in fact, what's really great is you can take a set of code and you can duplicate that whole set if you want to um, have a second set of code that's similar. So I'm going to hold down my control key and click on the top of this block set of blocks and I can select duplicate. All right, and what that does is it brings a whole second set here. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to show you what play sound sounds like as well as start sound. So I'm going to pull this out here for a second and I'm going to get rid of play sound and I'm going to bring in start sound. Okay, and I'm going to put the change pitch in the same place. So now I'm going to add a different sound because uh, just for this demonstration, I want to do something more like a, a musical tone. And so if I go back to sounds in the sound tab and I go down to my sounds selection, I'm going to go choose a sound and I'm going to go to notes. And maybe let's try a, I don't know, let's see here. That sounds good. Electric guitar. So here's my electric guitar sound. It's now imported into my cat sprite. And if I go to my code tab, I can change this to electric guitar. And now let's look at these side by side for a second here. We've got repeat 10 times, play the electric guitar until done, and then change the pitch by 10. This one says, start the sound and then change the pitch by 10. So let me clear all the sound effects and let's see what this sounds like here. Here's the first one. Okay, you get the idea. I'm gonna clear the effects and here's the second one. So what happens is, because this is starting the sound, it moves right along to the next portion of the script. And because we're using this repeat block, we're basically saying, come back around. So when this one starts the sound and then changes the pitch, it comes back around to do the next one really quickly. When this one comes in and changes the pitch by 10, it waits until the sound is done before it goes back and repeats it by 10, which is why this one takes longer and has a different type of effect. So just know when you're using these two different blocks, play sound and start sound, they'll have different effects depending on what it, and what you're looking for in your project. The last two down here, blocks that I'm going to show you are just changing the volume and setting the volume. Again, self-explanatory. Changing the volume would be um, something that you might want to have as, a, as maybe, maybe an object is going away from you in the um, project that you're working on or it's coming closer to you. And so you'd want to change the volume as it gets closer or as it gets farther. And then setting the volume, of course, just completely sets the volume of that particular sound to be either lower or higher than what the default sound is. All right, and I won't get into the reporter block, which is here. Uh, again, we'll talk about reporter blocks in another video. And that's it for sound.